All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. What is happiness? It is what follows any act of the law of science, but it is not always understood. Sin and misery are the effects of our belief put in practice, governed by a law of sin and death. Man is the medium of these two laws, the one chance, or ignorance, which is of this world, the other God, or science, which is of a higher. The wisdom of one is called the law, the knowledge of the other is the gospel, or science. These two laws enter into all our acts. Mathematics contains the two laws. The solving of a problem does not establish the science, although it may be right, but it develops a phenomenon for a more wise and excellent law called science, so that the world may be benefited by it. So by establishing the law of science, we destroy the law of ignorance. This holds good of all the laws of science. The introduction of the one is the destruction of the other to all who understand. To such there is no offering up of sins or sacrifices, but a fearful looking for judgment or acting wrong that will get us into trouble. This keeps us on our guard. Now it has not entered into man's heart to conceive a more excellent law, whereby man may be saved from his sins or errors that bind him down by the laws of sin and death. To introduce a science that can explain the errors that keep us in trouble is what the prophets foretold and wise men have looked for ever since the world began. This knowledge has been called by various names. It was called the New Jerusalem that came down from heaven, and it was called the Kingdom of Heaven. This is the law that was written in the hearts. It is the knowledge of ourselves that can see the evils of our own misery. It may be asked, how can we distinguish between the two? For everyone has a right to his own opinion. That is true, but science does not leave it answered in that way, but proves it, so that there can be no mistake. Now as disease is an error, so the mind, as in any error, must be corrected by a power independent of itself. This power must be governed by a science in all cases, though it may not be necessarily understood by the person applying the power. As science, like God, never acts except like a balance which judges correctly, it contains no thought or reason, but judges everyone according to his worth. As error is a chemical action and contains all of the above, it is like two rogues at war with itself. There is an old saying, and a very good one, that when two rogues fall out, an honest man gets his due. So when error is at war, it develops some truth, or science. As the degrees from total darkness, or ignorance, are progressive, they embrace all kinds of talents, like teachers from the lowest classes of this world to the highest of the spiritual world. All science to the natural world is looked upon as a mystery, witchcraft, sorcery, etc., because it cannot see anything beyond itself. But there is a mind that can teach it, and another that can learn it and so on, until it reaches a science. Then comes the end of the world of error, and the introduction of a more excellent law of God, or science. We often hear people say that the object of religion is to make us happy. 
The question then arises, what is happiness? This question cannot be decided by the opinions of one man or a hundred, for it must embrace some wisdom higher than man's opinion. If the author had no wisdom superior to the common belief of the world, and chose the word happiness merely to represent a quiet, ignorant state, then I have no objection to the common definition of it. But if it includes the person that labors for the improvement of man and his development, then I say the word is misapplied, for the results are as wide apart as virtue and vice. You might as well apply the word virtue to the most vicious person on earth as to apply the word happiness to a man who seeks every opportunity to defraud and get the advantage of his neighbor by every means in his power without laying himself liable to the law. Just see how the word is used. The little child, when it is playing around like a little puppy, is called happy. Now if this is happiness, it is not wisdom. So if it is desired rather than wisdom, then it is folly to be wise. Now let this state be called quiet, and the word happiness be applied to the person who, by his labors, has discovered some great truth that is for the benefit of man's condition and who puts his wisdom into practice and receives something that he feels and knows has enriched him both in health and wisdom and has raised him above the one who is ignorant. Then he can say that wisdom is happiness and riches. Just the same as the opposite man can say of the goods and money which he has extorted from some ignorant person as he sits down and counts it over and over and exclaims, How happy am I for what I have got! Now while he is rejoicing over the ill-gotten gains, his neighbor is grieving over his losses and turns to the other, who has by his labor lifted up some poor sick invalid who had been robbed by these land sharks out of their health and left on the cold, icy hand of the world to perish for want of the wisdom that might make them free. Now see such a person suffering, robbed of the comforts of this life, and praying that some kind angel would come and feed them with the bread of life, or explain to them the great truth of nature, which will set them free from sin and death. Now see someone come and open the book of wisdom and read to them all their griefs and pains and by the power of his wisdom destroy their beliefs or misery and show them the true way. Then they will arise in their strength and might and with the God or wisdom which has set them free. Then the oppressed and the Redeemer can mingle together, and their joy will reign, and that is happiness. As a person's happiness is the effect of his knowledge, to be good is the first of science. All religion that embraces creeds is of this world, and is governed by laws and contains rewards and punishments. Therefore, holding out inducements to be good with one hand, and retribution with the other is not the religion of Christ. He is in us and a part of us, and to know ourselves is to know Christ, and to preach Christ is to help each other out of our troubles, destroying the enemy that has possession of us. Thus to lay down your life for your friends is not so easy a matter as some might think. It is easier to talk about religion than to talk it. To talk it 
is to put it into practice, and to put it into practice is to give it to those who ask. For to give them a stone when they ask for bread is what anyone can do, as then you part with nothing. To give to everyone that asks of you some spiritual food or knowledge that will cool their feverish tongue or soothe their excited brain and lead them, like the Good Shepherd, to their home of health where they can rejoice with their friends is not so easy as to sit down and thank the Lord that you are not like other men. To be a follower of Christ is not an easy thing, but to be a representative of the Kingdom of Heaven is not very hard. It only requires one to become as ignorant as a child. The majority of men have not much to sacrifice to become a representative of the Kingdom of Heaven. But to become a follower of Christ is not so easy a task. To call yourself a follower of Jesus is to call yourself a pattern of goodness, and that was more than Jesus said of himself for he never sounded the trumpet of his own praise. We are called upon to become followers of Christ, or science, so that the world may be benefited by his truth. This is our happiness, and the happiness of others, for we are all workers of the same truth. Therefore, forsake error, and embrace the true science, or truth, and fight the enemy of health like a soldier of science. There cannot be such an element as happiness of itself, nor such a state outside of man's wisdom. Then happiness must be the result of either our wisdom or our belief. If it is from wisdom, it becomes a part of ourselves. But if it is from belief, it becomes adopted, and we may lose it. We often hear a person say that religion makes him happy. Now, if religion is anything outside of ourselves, then it contains neither happiness nor misery. But if we seek this something we call religion, we are happy when we get it. Can any person define what they get that makes them happy except that it is a belief, and that belief which will make one person happy will make another miserable? Look at any religious society and you will find that the individuals cannot all agree in belief. So those who do agree are slaves to those whose authority they admit as their rulers. A church has its pastor, its deacons, and other officers, also its forms to which its members must subscribe, and they, being numerous, and each having an opinion of themselves, are either led or ruled into submission by the pastor. This sometimes makes the yoke grievous to be borne, for the burdens are heavy, while they who bind them are happy, for they rule, and their power is their happiness. I will illustrate happiness. Suppose a person is told that certain food, if eaten, will produce certain effects. He then eats the food and the effect is produced. This is proof that the food produced the effect, for he reasons that if he had not eaten it, the effect would not have occurred. This he lays to the food, but that, containing no happiness or misery, is not really the author of his misery, therefore it must be in himself. 
Suppose I eat the same kind of food and I feel well. The food does not contain that feeling, so that is in me. Suppose furthermore I say to him, The food is not the cause of your trouble, but the opinion of the person who told you it would hurt you is the author of the mischief. And he had been deceived and believes the food contained something that was hard to digest. You, from sympathy, become affected, and you were nervous when you ate the food. You then attached your senses to the fear and lay your trouble to the food. Here you see, misery is what follows the belief, and happiness is that state that follows our belief or wisdom. If our wisdom can give us a science that will correct our opinion, this is happiness that the world knows not of.